Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. What you're watching here is actually the first image that will make it into my new film. It's not chronologically the first image, but it's the first I created. The character you see here though is a placeholder made only for this video. I haven't designed my character for the film yet, but I thought it would look a bit empty without anybody in this shot, so I threw this dude in there for now. What I'm really excited about is how I'm now moving the camera in my 2D looking scene. As I've said before, for this new film that I'm making, I really want the camera work to be a bit more spicy than in my previous films, for which I've mainly relied on static backgrounds. For this shot I began modeling the room in Cinema 4D. I looked online for references of hospital waiting rooms to get some inspiration of the interior design. As you might have seen in my previous episodes, my approach is to get all the rough geometry and the lighting in place within the 3D software. Once that looks good, I render it using a realistic renderer. In this case, I use Redshift. And then I add all the details in Photoshop. I find this to be a very creative process for me, and the 3D solves a lot of the major problems like composition, lighting and mood. That stuff gets sort of set early on, and then I can just enjoy the process of designing elements within that scene. For things like the vending machines, all I had to create here were two big cubes, as the textures and details were later painted in Photoshop. Since I do most of the work for my films myself, excluding the music, I have to act as a few different roles, meaning I'm the director who wants to push it to be packed with as many great shots as possible, of course, but I also need to act producer and make sure I set goals that are realistic. It's easy to just go to town with what I want in there and then end up, you know, never being able to finish it. When you have something between 40 and 50 shots to create, it can be really hard to find that balance. I always search for ways to be as productive as I can be. This 3D paintover method has really eliminated some of the obstacles I had in terms of staying you know, creative and productive. Now back to this scene. To make the camera move within it, I used projection mapping. When doing that, you can be a bit clever with how you layer your assets. I rendered the foreground elements, in this case the chairs, on a separate layer. That way I can paint what's behind them, so that when the camera later moves, we see just that. Things that are lined up along the wall are fine to be part of a background layer, but you could actually export the vending machines and you know, other elements here on separate layers too. I saved these painted layers as PNGs and brought them back as textures into Cinema 4D. I add the background painting to the background geometry and set it to use the camera which we are looking through for camera mapping. The same things for the chairs. As you can see we now got this set up so that when we use a different camera and move it around our textures are stuck to the geometry. You can only go so far though before it sort of breaks, but for this shot I only wanted a slow tracking movement up to the character, so that worked great. I painted and animated the character in the same Photoshop document.
I can later export him on transparency and add him back into the scene either through Cinema 4D on like a card or in After Effects. I wanted the floor to be slightly reflective, but I made sure not to paint the reflections in the baked 2D image, as they would in that case move with the floor, and that would not look correct. Instead, I rendered out a reflection pass of the floor only, hiding the other elements from the viewport, but showing up in reflections, so that it could be composited together in After Effects at the end. Hey, by the way, we are nearly hitting 40,000 subscribers, and that is crazy, it's truly amazing. Uh, thanks to everyone who is watching and subscribing and commenting. It's really nice to connect with all you guys, of course, and it's so great to see all the positive response that you are giving. I was thinking I could make a Q&A video answering some of the questions uh, now to celebrate this 40k. If you have any questions, feel free to write some in the comments for this video. Uh, I will then, after a little while, pick some of the most popular ones and uh, yeah, answer those in a new video. Here you can see the final shot again. I've almost finished the writing for this film, so I'm really excited to start building this new world. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already to follow along when I make this film. I will see you all soon. Bye.